Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Peacock. This morning I want to talk to you about uh, diabetic ulcers and how we now are able to treat diabetic ulcers and, and prevent them from coming back with mental invasive modalities. Now one of the issues with diabetics, most of them have a condition called uh, gastroc equinus or equinus where they can't dorsiflex their foot 10 degrees in normal gait. Well, and that's important because in normal gait, your, your uh, tibial bone goes forward, your shin, 10 degrees. So if you can't dorsiflex your ankle 10 degrees, you'll get excessive pressure on the forefoot and you'll get overpronation in midfoot, which leads to charco deformity and forefoot ulcers. So there's a lot of modalities out there now to treat ulcers, and they're all good. But the problem with most of them is that after the ulcers are healed and the patients go back to normal activity, the ulcers return. That's not the case with surgical intervention. When you, re when you balance the tendons in, in a diabetic or, or correct underlying biomechanics, the ulcers uh, heal and they don't come back at, as often with a whole lot less uh, uh, problem with the ulcer uh, becoming an osteomyelitis and the patient having amputation. So, for example, with total contact casting, uh, over 80% of those ulcers in the forefoot will heal. However, within five years, over 80% also return. So really, co total contact casting only heals about 15% of the ulcers. Whereas if you compare that to uh, lengthening of the posterior group, more than 90% of those are healing, and nearly all of them do not come back. So the return rate is only about 12%. So with uh, tendon rebalance and, and correcting biomechanical issues, you've got an 88% or greater uh, ability to heal ulcers in the long term so the, pa the patients don't have the ulcers return. This is a very important aspect of treating ulcers. We want to get rid of the ulcer, but we also want to make the ulcer never come back. And that's only done by treating the underlying biomechanical issue. Here's a case I want to present to you where a patient had an ulcer for over a year and most likely would end up with a blown knee amputation. However, the problem with her was not that she couldn't heal the ulcer. The problem was she had a biomechanical issue that needed to be addressed. So let's look at that. Good morning, I'm Dr. Peacock. I'm a professor in the Academy of Ambulatory Foot and Ankle Surgery. And this morning I want to show you how we can use mentally invasive surgery and tendon rebalancing uh, protocols to heal chronic diabetic ulcers. This patient had an ulcer for over one year when we saw her. Let me show you what the ulcer looks like now. Uh, this is about two and a half months after surgery. The ulcer was fairly significant. Uh, she had a touch of charco. And what we did with her in the office, actually, if you look at the back of her leg, we actually performed a two-point two uh, Z lengthening of the tendon here, Achilles tendon. We did this under local anesthetic. So we just did a V block here. And if you look at her foot, even with her foot at now her knee extended, look how much we can get, how much dorsiflexion we have in her foot now. So even if I invert her foot here, a lot of dorsiflexion, with her knee bent, of course, bending knee right here, pretty good right here. So here's the thing. These midfoot ulcers in this area here also heal with tendon rebalance. Tendon rebalance is extremely important. 90% of all diabetics have a tight posterior muscle group and that is the cause of many of their ulcers. It's the cause of the reason they get charco. It's the cause for their forefoot ulcers. And some studies now are showing up to 92% of these patients heal permanently with tendon rebalancing. There was a 500 uh, patient uh, study on forefoot ulcers here in which they did Achilles tendon lengthens and if that failed they then performed percutaneous metatarsal osteotomies and they got 92% healing rates in a five-year study. This really beats uh, most other modalities. For example, uh, total contact casting is as much as 83% effective. However, within five years more than 80% of them also come back. This is a, a way to permanently, permanently uh, correct the patient. Now we also use total contact casting as part of the, part of the protocol. So all of these uh, things do work and in conjunction they work really well. Uh, some of the modalities by themselves 
are, are okay, but when played with the entire band, it, it's really a lot better. So if you use all the other healing modalities, along with surgical intervention to correct what's causing the ulcer, you get much better results. So let's just talk to the patient. Now, with this ulcer you had, how long did you have this ulcer again before you saw me? A year. So you had the ulcer for one year. Mm -hmm. Now, what were they doing for the ulcer? I know that you told me they were debriding it and put some stuff on it, like uh, wound healing stuff and all that. Basically, like you say, debriding it and mm -hmm. cutting around it, mm -hmm. but not it wasn't healing. Right. Just steady cutting around the area right. that um, had the ulcer, but no healing, just keep right. cutting and cutting, lower and lower. And so I end up, you know, hearing about you. He was a foot doctor, right? And um, I came this way, and this is the results. Right. I'm healed. So right now, uh, another advantage is we have her. She's wearing her regular shoe here. So this is the shoe she's wearing today. She's not in a cast or anything, so she's been able to go back to more normal activity. We're all going to put a modified insole in her shoe to the foot today uh, that we made. So we do have that we're dispensing for her today. Uh, but here's the thing: the, the tendon rebounds and the cause of diabetic ulcers has a more to do with biomechanics, especially when they're plantar ulcers. So it doesn't matter what you put on these ulcers, what kind of modality you use, what type of wound healing product, what type of anything you do, it's going to come back as soon as the patient walks on it because it's caused mostly by neuropathic issues in the leg which affect the muscles and tighten the posterior group and cause the ulcer. So the most effective way to permanently heal these ulcers and to prevent amputation is to correct the underlying deformity, which we can do now even with minimally invasive surgery. We did this in the office under local anesthetic, where it wasn't the risk of her being put to sleep, one the risk for a heart or anything of that nature, so we did this in a very safe environment. Uh, now let me ask you this, even when we use the, the cast, did that work for you? Remember at first? So it, it didn't work either. It, it didn't so, work. so even the contact cast by itself didn't work. And mm -hmm. the reason why is that she was so contracted that putting the cast on, all it did was pressure on that. So after we got the tendon released, we then went back to the contact cast and then it healed really fast, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So now we've been out of the, we've you've been back in your normal shoe gear how long now? Um about a month now. So we've been she's been walking full weight bearing for a month without returning the ulcer. So I think we've got this one knocked for her and hopefully nothing will come back. Now you do have to worry about one other thing. If you overcorrect this tendon, you can get calcaneal gait and have an ulcer that forms in the heel. And that's the reason why I don't do the three point uh, tendon release because it lengthens it too much in some patients. I do like to double the, uh, the lengthening, which is a, a two, two incision approach. Seems to be less likely of over lengthening.